good morning good afternoon and uh, good evening all uh, members of the society for consciousness studies and as well as uh, other uh, friends from all over the world myself and dr nesin dr nesin is a neuroscientist she did her doctorate from nimkans in neurophysiology and she is working now as a psychologist in christ university bangalore and uh, both of us are working in the consciousness research myself uh, i am basically a physicist i did my doctorate uh, in the foundational problems in quantum mechanics i also did my uh, post doc under uh, dr owen gingrich who is an astronomer at harvard university and i am also a catholic priest so i am into uh, different uh, sub uh, sects integrating science uh philosophy humanity spirituality all those things so we are both nesin and myself we are grateful to uh, dr thomas brophy who came to bangalore all the way from california to participate in the conference on exploring consciousness non duality to non locality which was conducted in bangalore september 22 to 24 and uh, we have some slides of that here you could see that dr brophy and dr bindu and myself there dr bindu uh, is the uh, director of the consciousness center at nimkans nimkans is one of the very famous and then uh, you could see that some of the participants uh, from all over the world and uh, you can also see kiran kumar who is might be participating in this program and uh, yes we have a few others who are also uh, there so we are as yesterday uh brophy was speaking about you know we can have a kind of an east west uh, ping pong so we had a great time uh, in bangalore interacting with uh, more of the indian philosophical traditions as well as uh, quantum mechanics and then uh, also from the western neuro uh, physiological uh, and other studies so we were uh, almost uh, coming together as a kind of a complementarity and now uh, here uh, in the west we are gathering again uh, playing as uh, brophy has said uh, the the ping pong so thank you uh, very much uh, for uh, dr thomas brophy and for wonderfully uh, organizing uh, this program uh, who is assisted Uh, by uh, jeffrey dr jeffrey uh, martin and uh, i am also uh, thankful to uh, uh, alan combs who also brought me into this consciousness uh, studies so in that way uh, we were uh, actually uh, integrating all the uh, different traditions as we have heard from yesterday and today so many uh, of the interesting uh, topics so what is this consciousness yesterday uh, uh, arnold delorme has spoken and it is a very uh, difficult and then uh, though we were gra grappling uh, with this uh, concept from the very beginning of uh, the uh, human consciousness or human as we have stood up uh as by padal we have from the east and the west uh, we were integrating so we could uh, see that uh, this uh, what we are uh, talking today is about the awareness of evolving the the consciousness 
and uh, if we are looking up into the uh, the traditions uh, we can start uh, from the indian tradition as we are uh, already into uh, this deeply uh, integrated uh, different religious traditions different uh, spiritual traditions uh, different cultural traditions and uh, most of the the religious uh, traditions are also here in india we have uh, our own uh, traditions like uh, hinduism buddhism uh, sikhism which are of the the main uh, that was evolved in india we also have uh, uh, judaism christianity islam and uh, parsi religions they have also came to india though uh, the evolved religions from india as well as uh, the religions who came from um, outside we have an integrated uh, intercultural uh, uh, completeness where we find we are fused and uh, we could see that the depth of philosophy from all these traditions are giving a kind of uh, richness to the indian uh, philosophical spiritual and scientific traditions if we look into the the special uh, hindu tradition we could see that from the very beginning of time um, onwards we have great masters uh, speaking about what is the meaning of life from where we came and then what is uh, how we need to to move forward where not only the men but also the women like uh, maitreyi uh, katyayini gargi and the others they were interacting and dialoguing with yajnavalkya and uh, we could also see that great uh, philosophical traditions the six uh, darshanas where we also see the great spiritual masters as well as philosophers like uh, shankara who proposed uh the uh, advaita and also we have vishishta advaita by ramanuja and also dvaita uh, by uh, uh, by another uh, great uh, philosopher and then uh, we also see that uh, we have uh, the buddhist traditions and in the buddhist traditions we definitely will see that speaking uh, in terms of uh, high philosophical categories they were uh, denying uh, the uh, the emptiness uh, of the the self uh, the psychophysical processes and uh, also no self but uh, all these traditions we may find that what is the reason why they were all uh, thinking about why uh, we should speak or we should uh, think about and then why should we research more on this uh, consciousness or they called it as uh, pratnya so there we could uh, find that the, the reason is that the transformation of the person as an example an 8th century uh, philosopher uh, also a spiritual person known as chandideva from the buddhist tradition he was uh, writing a book on bodhisattva charyavadara uh, it's a long book and uh, every buddhist monk who is doing his geshe or doctorate he will be speaking uh, he will be studying it uh, for almost an year so the interest or the goal of all these spiritual traditions are to transform the person as alan combs was uh, showing uh, to us today that you know the carl rogers book on becoming a person so all these research definitely were engaged in order to transform the person in order to transform the, the consciousness as i have said the bodhisattva charyavadara explains about almost 80 varieties of anger and how to counter it and how to remove it so that you can become a wonderful uh, person a person with lots of uh, 
characteristics, attitudes, and who could relate with others. So we uh, see that the main aim of the Indian philosophical traditions and Indian culture is to transform the consciousness, uh, the prajna or uh, the, the person and groom that person to realize the full potential. And as uh, we see that, you know, the lotus flower here, that the same way this lotus flower is capable of blooming and uh, shedding its petals into a wider. So that is the aim. So that is what uh, from the Indian philosophical traditions uh, we uh, experience. And as uh, we have heard from many of these uh, uh, masters today and yesterday, we could uh, see that from uh, Descartes uh, onwards, there were uh, great uh, physicists, philosophers, scientists, mathematicians, and they were all coming together. But we could see that as uh, the East was more concerned about the spiritual traditions and the spiritual transformation of the person, but in the West, uh, like the philosophers Comte, who was saying that um, there is the, the religious sphere and the metaphysical uh, phase and then the scientific phase. So each one has to eliminate and ultimately only the scientific phase will be there and which we may um, see today that, you know, the uh, Hawking and Dawkins, uh, they are all promoting and many, uh, many and others towards a materialistic uh, way of understanding of the uh, consciousness. So to some extent, we may find that there is the, the rejection of the spiritual. And today, what we may uh, experience uh, is that we are looking from the science and technology perspective, uh, like uh, neurons and the other in the uh, uh, new uh, quantum mechanical way, which could be implanted as microchips with the DNA and the others. So a materialistic outlook and a materialist, materialistic way of uh, transforming the person. So as uh, Dr. Uh, Thomas Brophy was saying that if we can have an integration of the West and the East, uh, that the spiritual and the material, so definitely we will have a, a holistic uh, account. So uh, what we were trying to uh, experience all these uh, days, yesterday and today, that you know what is meant by uh, consciousness and uh, this uh, person, uh, Arthur uh, Reber has given a great explanations, uh, but... Uh, we know that, you know, it is not uh, totally comprehensive. And uh, we also see that the consciousness uh, from the objective uh, level, as well as from the subjective level, uh, from the perspective of uh, science and from the uh, perspective of psychology, humanities, we can study. But still, as uh, Marvin Minsky uh, used to say that, you know, uh, consciousness may be uh, artificial or we, we can create. Uh, so in that way, still we see that, you know, we have not yet grappled with what is meant by this consciousness. We can also see that uh, from uh, different uh, ways we can, uh, the levels of consciousness, the types of consciousness, and also the contents of uh, consciousness, alteration of self-consciousness, and uh, it is a multi-dimensional and it uh, a kind of a manifold. So here uh, uh, it is given a different, uh, very many explanations and uh, different ways of understanding uh, the, the consciousness. But I am not going to, uh, to explain about all this. Uh, we can also see that a, a graph which can be uh, drawn uh, by the awareness and the wakefulness. And then these are all the, the different ways of understanding from coma to deep sleep, to light sleep, to drowsiness, to conscious, uh, conscious uh, wakefulness. And uh, we could also see that a way of uh, knowing as Thomas Nagel uh, would say that, you know, uh, how we will be able to find our own identity. 
and uh, there we have the outside observer, the personal observer, and uh, these different dimensions. And what we are uh, going to say about uh, is the beginning of this uh, consciousness is actually the awareness. So the, the self-awareness and self, uh, non-self uh, discrimination. So the self-consciousness uh, that is the, can be considered as a, a identity of the person. And this self, uh, non-self uh, discrimination, what is the separating uh, differentiation uh, with the, uh, the other person? So this self-consciousness and uh, self, uh, non-self discrimination, these are also very uh, important aspects. And uh, we also uh, see this awareness is actually uh, with uh, starting from even the microbial uh, bacterial level. And uh, my uh, uh, professor, uh, associate uh, professor, uh, Dr. Nesin, uh, she will be carrying on the next one, and then we will uh, come back. And uh, Dr. Nesin, please take over. Thank you, Professor. Um, can I share my slide? Yeah. Okay. Um, what else we can continue? I can ask you to change it. Yes. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Um, so. Here, as Professor mentioned, we can study consciousness by looking at various dimensions. But mainly here, we are trying to understand it from that awareness perspective, that how is how distinct is our awareness or self-awareness, as well as the self and non-self discrimination. Is it only, next slide, yeah, is it only for human uh, being? Um, because um, for a long time, uh, philosophers, psychologists, uh, neuroscientists and many other people uh, have thought about what is special about human um, awareness. There is this, uh, it's, there is a time space continuity to this awareness. When I sleep with my consciousness, I wake up with my own consciousness and not with my husband's consciousness who is sleeping next. So that uh, indicate that uh, I have a continuity of my consciousness, which acquired over the period of time. So this is uh, uh, something um, very distinct about, uh, uh, very individual about every person. Everybody have their consciousness and it is very individual. We can call it as an organismic level of consciousness. And this organismic level of consciousness is, uh, um, uh, is giving me a self non self discrimination also. I am aware that this is me and this is my limits. And uh, next slide. Yeah. So this con organismic level of consciousness is uh, present with everybody. In very rare cases, we can find some kind of changes in it. For example, dissociative identity disorder, where uh, a person's awareness is somewhat affected or sometimes it is uh, um, altered. So human being is not made up of one cell, but billions of cells organized into tissues, organs, and organ systems. So, so this organismic level of awareness uh, is present with human. What about it, whether there is any other awareness? Yes, there is actually. The systemic level of awareness is present with us. Most of the thing that is happening with our uh, um, biological system, uh, like homeostasis or uh, um, motor control, et cetera, are unconscious processes. So there is a systemic level of awareness which help my body to adjust with all the changes in the environment and modify according to that need. Um, apart from this, there is a, each and every cell is also aware about its external and internal condition. Now, many of the speakers, uh, now even uh, in this conference, plus there are a lot of people who talk about the awareness of the cell. Cell is having an awareness of its own, of its internal condition, as well as external condition. Next slide. Yeah. Uh, so uh, is it only the vertebrates that have this all three kind of awareness, that organismic level of awareness, systemic level of awareness, and the cellular level of awareness? So um, we can see that other animals are also able to have this awareness. So for example, in this book, um, Ancient Origin of uh, Consciousness, Todd and uh, Malat has talked about 
probably such kind of organismic level of awareness might have originated from the Cambrian period. Uh, so the fishes, um, amphibians, reptiles, apes, uh, the birds, all these have having this organismic level of awareness. But yet, it's not solved yet. We have still questions. For example, the placental mammals, are there uh, the, when they when the embryo is growing, when does that awareness originate? Organismic level of awareness from uh, an embryo. How does it um, uh, evolve? Or human? Uh, would, do we have only organismic level of awareness, or whether there is a, a more to that, a transpersonal or a metaphysical awareness? We have ample amount of examples which project which tells that probably there is more to this. So next. Uh, um, yeah, we can skip next. Um, yeah, it's not only that vertebrates are uh, having awareness. A lot of examples on a lot of studies on octopus and bees has shown that they are also independent individuals with intelligence. So organismic level of awareness, systemic level of awareness, uh, as well as uh, the cellular level of awareness is present uh, with uh, these organisms. Uh, next slide. Next, uh, yeah, uh, sometimes uh, it is very curious to see that planaria, which is a flat worm, when it has been segmented into multiple segments, they are um, later can develop into its own individual um, with its own identity or awareness. How does it evolve? There are definitely stem cells present all over its body, but is the stem cells responsible for that awareness to emerge? We still don't know, but what one thing we sure that the when plenary is being cut into two small, small fragments, it is able to evolve into individuals. Next slide. So to study that, we can go into a connecting link between single cell and uh, multicellular organism, that is Volvox. Next slide. Uh, uh, Volvox is a freshwater algae. Uh, it's very beautiful to see this freshwater algae. Next slide. Uh, there are two types of uh, cells, and they emerged from a single cellular organism called as Chlamydomonas, which has mortality, and these uh, cells over the period by incomplete cytokinesis, they stayed as a colony. Next slide, please. Yeah, here we can see that there are two kinds of cells. The outside layer, which is a vegetative cell or a somatic cell layer, and inside there is this gonadial cells, which later develop into daughter colonies. On uh, the slide B, we can see the daughter colonies. When, uh, but proper time, this daughter colonies come out by breaking it open, this volvox. So this uh, volvox has both sexual reproduction as well as asexual reproduction. Next slide. Uh, next, uh, these are the two type of cells. Yeah, next slide. Um, next. Yeah. So these cells, these two cells, it's curious to see that Volvox is able to distinct these two cells, that there is a vegetative cell as well as a inside gonadial cell. But the Volvox function as a single organism. It moves towards light, phototaxis, or it moves towards certain kind of chemicals, chemotaxis, etc. So they function, even though they are made up of two types of cells, there is a cellular awareness, definitely, but there is an organismic level of awareness that is present as a whole. Next slide, please. Yeah, next slide. Uh, so scientists have studied about how does this gonadia cells, which is inside, is developing into a daughter colony. Uh, there is striking similarity for this with our uh, animal embryo development, the mammalian kingdom and embryo development. We can see that there is a division of labor which happens very early during the development itself. Next slide. Uh, apart from this, they can even detect when there is an invasion of pathogen also. Here we we can see a parasite getting inside, uh, uh, gotten inside this wall box and started eating it. So it identifies it. Next slide. So it's not only the wall box. Next slide. Um, uh, next. Uh, Two more you can go. Yeah, it's not only this wall box, but bacterial cells are also aware about. Um, please go to the yeah, next slide. Next slide. Uh, next. Yeah, so it's not only the use, uh, eukaryotic cell, but prokaryotic cell also have its own awareness and self-non-self-discrimination. Next slide. 
in the study, there are sibling colonies of bacteria, which is which indicate that they have very similar genetic material. But later on the uh, last slide, we can see that this colonies are fighting each other for the agar uh, uh, space and food, etc. They produce antibiotics to kill each other. So these are sibling colonies. Even though they are sibling colonies, they are so similar, they identify that this is not me and it is something else. Yes, next slide. So even uh, bacterial cell also conjugation. Uh, bacterial cells will have ability to transfer the genetic material from one cell to the other, but it is not that all the cells will determine to transfer. Only very less cells, fraction of the population will determine to change. So there is a decision-making for individual bacterial cells. So with this, uh, yeah, with this, I would like to say that there is an evolution of uh, awareness from bacterial cells to um, multicellular organism. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Next. Next. Yeah, so there is this uh, from single cell organism. How did it got evolved from cellular awareness to an organismic level of awareness and probably maybe a metaphysical awareness. Next slide. And what about uh, um, the daughter colony's awareness or how does that fetus develop its own self-awareness? With this, I thank uh, the organizers for inviting us and I would like to call uh, uh, Professor Matthew for thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One minute, guys, just a heads up on that. Yes, so yes, uh, thank you. And then, uh, yes, uh, this consciousness is still we are grappling with. And I, I think that we need to start with the, what is meant by awareness. And uh, we could experience that uh, from uh, the microorganisms, bacteria onwards, we are uh, finding this awareness. And uh, this is as the complexity increases, uh, also uh, the uh, consciousness increases, and thus we are coming towards the complex consciousness of the human being. Thank you very much.